Well, good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you to St. Margaret's Church, Angmering, for our special Christmas Eve celebration. This time of year, we're all thinking, aren't we, about presents, those that we're going to give and receive tomorrow. So it's really wonderful that we can come together and think about the greatest present of all that God gives to us at Christmas time, namely his own son, Jesus Christ. A big welcome to those of us here in church. It's lovely that you can join us here in person, but we also want to give a very, very warm welcome to those joining us through our live stream. We know that at this particular time, many of you will be doing that and you're very welcome indeed. So whoever you are and whatever has brought you to tune in this afternoon, we're delighted to have you with us. So in a moment, our service is going to start, one which we hope you'll enjoy and will help you to understand more of the joy that each one of us can receive at this Christmas time. So may we just as we're seated, wherever we are, let's join together in this prayer. Let's pray. We thank you, God, for Christmas. We thank you for all the fun that we can have. Thank you now for the chance to think about Jesus, the true star of Christmas. Open our minds to think about him, open our hearts to receive him, and open our wills to follow him. Amen. And now at the start of our service, we're going to be joined by some very special guests, the Righteous Rockers, who are going to sing to us our first carol. The first Noel, the angels did sing, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was. issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everybody went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea in Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in the cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
Church Advent Poem 2020, read by the children of St Margaret's School. In Nazareth, town an angel visited Mary. He said to the girl, don't look so frightened, I'm not scary. In fact, I have news, you will give birth to a boy, the son of the most high God, who will bring great joy. Let it be done as God wills, said Mary as she agreed. Later in the Quirinius, the governor decreed. So all travelled far to reach their hometowns, including Joseph, a descendant, a descendant of the crown. Now when they were there, Mary was ready to bear. So they went in the stable with, with animals they, they had to share. Around this time, shepherds were watching their flocks. And an angel appeared from nowhere, giving them shots. But good news, he said the king has been born nearby. So go out and find him with animals there by the stag. At this there appeared a great big choral song. The shepherds they find the boy cheered by the song. Um, and went home singing hallelujah. Out in east some magi were called by a star. Led by a star they soon made a rival in town. Going in they worshipped the king wrapped in clothes for a gown. And when they went home, they avoided nasty Herod. As Isaiah foretold that Jesus was king and God. Sent by his father for a stable birth. To save us all here on earth. Let me read two verses to you from the letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2 and verses 17 to 18. Um, you can just listen or if you have a Bible, you might want to look it up. For this reason... He, that is Jesus, had to be made like them, that is humans, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted." I don't know about you, but I am so looking forward to tomorrow. I'm looking forward to the stockings, I'm looking forward to presents, I'm looking forward to lunch, I'm looking forward to the Queen's speech. But perhaps above all of those things, above everything else, I'm looking forward to the premiere of Zog and the Flying Doctors. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, be sure to check out uh, Zog and the Flying Doctors on BBC tomorrow. Every year, uh, the BBC make an adaptation of one of Julia Donaldson's fine pieces of literature. And they're all very, very good, I can assure you. It's hard to beat a good Julia Donaldson book. And um, of all her great books, it's hard to beat The Gruffalo. The Gruffalo is one of my favourites. It's the story of a mouse. Um, and this mouse has heard of a monster called The Gruffalo. He's never met the Gruffalo before, but he goes to find him. And throughout the book, he um, meets people on the way and he tells them, I know things about the Gruffalo. I know that he has spikes on his back. I know that he's got a wart on the end of his nose, uh, but he's never met him. And all the animals he meets on the way, they've heard of the Gruffalo too, uh, but they don't believe in him because they've never met him. And they say... There's no such thing as the Gruffalo. If you've not read it, you really do need to go and read it. But I wonder this Christmas whether you feel a little bit like that mouse, at least when it comes to God. Do you feel like um, somebody who has heard about God, who knows things about God, but who's never met him? See, the mouse had a clear view of what he believed the Gruffalo was like, but he'd never met him. The other animals, they also thought they had a clear view of what God is like. And they didn't believe in him. Perhaps you're more like one of the animals today. You think you know what God is like, but you just don't believe in him. Well, in the verses we just read, there are two ideas that are really important that tell us what God is really like. And I think they tell us that God is not probably like many of us imagine. 
See, in Hebrews 2 that we just read, we heard these words. He, that is Jesus, had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful high priest. Because he himself suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is a description of Christmas here. Christmas when Jesus took on human flesh. We sing it in the carols. When Jesus became a human being. And he became a human being, it says, in every respect. He didn't play at being a human being. He wasn't a ghost or a robot pretending. He was a real, real human. He had to gain strength so that he could sit up as a toddler. He had to be fed by his mum. He even had to have his nappy changed. He had to learn to say mama and to walk and to play with his friends. He became like his brothers in every respect. And because he is like us in every respect, he's merciful. That is, he knows what it's like to be us. He knows what it's like to be you, what it's like to be picked on by other children. He knows what it's like to be accused unfairly. He even knows what it's like to be left behind by parents. That happens in one of the Gospels. And because he experienced all of this, Jesus is merciful. I don't know if you like Superman. I do. I I love Superman. I think it's great. Well, When Superman came to planet Earth, when he uh, zoomed in in his spaceship from his planet and he landed in Smallville in Kansas in his spaceship, he, from the very beginning, was not like everybody else. He was a man of steel, even as a baby. As a baby, he had mighty strength. He could run faster than anyone. He could shoot lasers from his eyes. He always was a superhero. And if you went to speak to Superman about how you felt about your human weakness, would he understand you? Would he be able to sympathise with your weakness? He wouldn't, would he? And so he would be limited in how he would be able to help you. This is not how it is with Jesus. He is not Superman. He's a real man. And so he is merciful. And he is able, it says, to help those who are being tempted. Please don't allow a preconceived idea of God being an almighty Superman in the sky to go unchallenged this Christmas. Do you have space to see God as a baby? God who was made like us in every respect. Who was made like you in every respect. Do you see God as merciful? And merciful because he understands you. He understands us firsthand. He understands the human experience. He understands the things you and I are going through and he is able to help. See God in Jesus Christ this Christmas, the God who is merciful. And that's the first thing that's really, really important to say this year uh, about who Jesus is he is merciful but there's more, there's more, he is able to save this second thing is, is, is so important because not, is he, he's not only one of us he's able to save us because he's faithful so God can understand and sympathise with our weakness but if that were all it would be useless he would sympathise with us but not Help us. And that's why we're told that Jesus is a faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Well, that's a big word, isn't it? Propitiation. Uh, That means getting rid of the debt of guilt that we have. You see, if we're honest, we have to admit that there are times we're not perfect. In fact, we often use that as an excuse, don't we? It's, it's a common phrase. When someone criticises you, have you ever said back to them, all right, nobody's perfect, as if that were a good excuse. So what kind of person do we need to pay off our debt? 
Well, the first thing that we need is someone who can stand in your place, someone who can represent you. And we've seen that Jesus did exactly that by being like us in every respect. But he also needs to have the cash. He has to be able to pay off the debt. If you came to me uh, because you needed help buying a new car because your old one had broken, I could give you sympathy in your need. Sympathy that you really do need a new car and sorry that it's broken. But I can't help you because I haven't got the resources to sort out a new car for you. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. And if Jesus were only a man, like us in every respect, that's great, but he wouldn't have the resources to help us. He simply wouldn't have the cash to pay off our debt. But here comes the incredible claim of the Christian God. The Christian God known in the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus is both fully man, we've seen, and fully God. Jesus can not only stand in our place as a true human being, he's able to help us as well. And here we see the great truth that Jesus is our champion. In verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 2, it's called Jesus our founder or our champion. And why is champion such a great word? I'm loving this word. It's so good because a champion plays on our behalf. He plays on your behalf and does what you cannot do. I like to run and I really try my best at running. Um, it brings out my competitive side. But at the end of the day, I'm not that good. I know how hard running is and I love watching it on TV. A couple of years ago, Eliud Kipkoje attempted to run a marathon in under two hours. I don't know if that means anything to you. Let's put it in perspective. Uh, so an Olympic 100 metres would be run somewhere in the region of under, just under 10 seconds. Okay. Eliud Kipchoge was looking to run a marathon at a pace of every single 100 metres that he ran would be around 17 seconds. That is remarkably close, isn't it? That is very, very fast. So this was an exciting moment to watch this attempt because Elu Kipkoje was running and he was my champion. As a fellow human being, he could stand in my place. I could claim, as a human being, we have broken the two hour uh, barrier for the marathon. Yet there's no way I could ever do that, is there? No. But Elliot Kipchoge, he might be able to. And this is what a champion does. He stands in our place. If he weren't a human, if he were a horse, or if he were a car, it just wouldn't be our victory, would it? But he stands in our place. And he is able to achieve for us what we cannot. He would not be a champion if he couldn't do what we could also not do. But Jesus is our champion. He lived a perfect life, an unblemished life, and he offered his perfect life to us, to me, to you. He achieved what we cannot. He made propitiation. He got rid of our sins. So don't be like the mouse or the other animals in the Gruffalo this Christmas. The mouse believed in the Gruffalo, but didn't have a real picture of what he was actually like. It's possible for us to do this with God. To believe in a God that we think we have a clear picture of. But there's not actually an entirely faithful picture. Or we could be like the other animals. They didn't believe in the Gruffalo. They, they, they too thought they had a clear picture of the Gruffalo. The, the one they didn't believe in. And it's for us, it's possible for us to believe that we have a clear picture of God. Even though he's a God we don't believe in. The reality of Christmas, however, is very different from the God of many of us. The God that many of us think we either live in fear of or don't believe in at all. The God of Christmas was a baby like us. A God who was weak and small. A God who was held in the arms of a young girl to whom he looked for his every need. Yet, at the same time, 
He is all that we're not. He is a perfect man who never did anything wrong. He's not a superhero who swoops in and saves us, but a champion who comes from among us and plays on our behalf. So this Christmas, come and adore him, born the King of Angels, the King of Angels who became one of us, who is able to sympathise with our every weakness, who is able to save us, to save you to the uttermost. who are going to be alone at Christmas. Bless them also to have an enjoyable time. Thank you that you are merciful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of your precious Son to us. 
We pray um, that the Lord Jesus would be the treasure of our hearts this Christmas. Father, we pray um, for peace to reign in households as well. We pray for graciousness for parents and um, for blessed, fun family time. We pray for homes to be full of laughter and joy. Um, and we thank you so much that you are our greatest comfort, you are our greatest joy. We thank you that you are our gift. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Almost come now to the end of our service. Big thank you to all those who've taken part and big thank you to you who have participated this afternoon. Can I just uh, say to you that if you'd like to find out more about the Christian faith, we are running a little course called Christianity Explored starting in the middle of January that uh, is a chance for adults to look and think about the Lord Jesus a bit more fully and hopefully to find some answers. So full details of that uh, can be found on our website. Do please also come to our services Christmas Day tomorrow, 10.30, you'd be very welcome to come along to that either in person or online, and then our services on the 27th at 10.30, and then we resume our normal pattern of 8, 9 o'clock and 10.30 on the 3rd of January. So we do hope and pray that we'll have the chance to see you on one of those occasions and into the new year. So a special prayer now as we finish. May the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child fill your hearts this Christmas. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you this afternoon and remain with you always. Amen.
wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy.